Hey viewers, I've got tons of service rifles slash AR-15 slash M4 slash whatever the hell these things are mods to review today, so let's get right to it. The mods are all listed on screen right now. When I started making this video, I really had no clue which ones were good and which were garbage, but after trying them all out, I've reached some conclusions. Which mod is the best? I'd say it comes down to a dead heat between two options, Deadpool 2099 service rifle and Service Rifle Expansion Project Redux. These two are undoubtedly the cream of the crop, but which you should use depends on individual factors. If you want a completely lore-friendly rendition of the Service Rifle, Deadpool's Service Rifle is for you. If you want a weapon that has a great variety of both retro-futuristic and modern attachments, you might like Service Rifle Expansion Project better. If you're on Xbox, it's no contest. Deadpool's service rifle is more balanced out of the box and has a slightly smaller file size. On PC, however, file size is no object, and you can adjust the statistics of Srep's weapons however you like, so it's difficult to definitively say one is better than the other. I would gladly recommend either of them. Now let's take a look at all of these mods in greater detail. Our first mod today is one of my recommended mods. It doesn't have a fancy name, it's just Service Rifle by Deadpool2099. It has a whopping six legendary variants, which you can find by completing the quest Loot, Pick, and Six Smoking Barrels. The quest starts at level 25 and directs you to find a dead postman who has postcards that vaguely inform you where the unique weapons are. Some of these uniques are new, others are returning from Fallout New Vegas. I didn't have time to find all six uniques, but I spawned them in, and I can conclude they're all fucking awesome, each sporting bespoke textures, attachments, and legendary effects. Besides the excellent uniques, this mod also has leveled list integration. You can find service rifles on enemies or in shops. This mod additionally contains a bayonet knife, which you can likewise find on enemies or in stores. The bayonet uses knife animations and only has two modifications, so it's nothing worth dwelling on. The actual service rifle itself is awesome, though. The model is very detailed, and it has great custom animations in both first and third person. Surprisingly, in power armor, everything functions as expected. Third person power armor uses submachine gun animations, but they don't look too bad. So far in my reviews, I've never taken balance into account, because I've always known that weapon statistics can be easily changed in Fallout 4 edit. However, the majority of the modding community is either on Xbox or is otherwise incapable of using Xedit, so I've realized balance is actually very important. Most players are going to be stuck with whatever settings the mod author intended, and often those do not play nicely with the vanilla game. Luckily, that's not the case with this service rifle. Compared to both the vanilla assault rifle and handmade rifle, an unmodified service rifle does much less damage, has a lower rate of fire, and has a slightly longer reload time. It also only holds 20 rounds in the magazine, while the assault rifle holds 30. It does have less than half the weight of the vanilla rifles, however. A fully souped-up service rifle definitely starts to outclass the vanilla assault rifles, delivering higher DPS for less weight, but by no means is it majorly overpowered. I would say this weapon is very well balanced. Moving on to attachments, again, I want to change up my reviewing process by not simply rattling off a list of every single attachment a weapon has, but instead giving my thoughts on the attachments overall. And I have to say, this weapon has some seriously impressive variety. Both in form and function, it can be modified into whatever you want, basically. My only complaints would be some minor animation issues with certain attachment combinations, and I wish there were more modern AR-15 parts available, but trust me, none of that is really a big deal. This mod is incredible. If you download it, you will not be disappointed. Second, we have a recently released mod from barely two weeks ago, Surplus Rifle M16A2, another, another millennia. This weapon has leveled list injection. You can find it on vendors, gunners, or raider bosses. In addition, you can find two unique variants. One is a gold prestige to carbine located at Fenn's Bank on a skeleton that also has a unique heist mask inspired by Payday 2, and a second homosexual variant called the Gay R15. No, I'm not joking. It's on board the Pridwin, you can find it. This weapon is an incredibly realistic rendition of an M16A2. You can tell the model was made many years ago, but it still holds up well, and it's been given some great custom animations. They work in power armor too, albeit using handmade rifle animations in third person. 
Unfortunately, there is a problem with classic holstered weapons. The gun's receiver doesn't appear when it's holstered on your back, but this could be a problem with classic holstered weapons and not this mod. The surplus rifle is extremely well balanced, with its base version sporting modest damage coupled with a lengthy reload time and hefty recoil. Even fully upgraded, the surplus rifle would be difficult to recommend on an objective basis compared to its vanilla counterparts. If anything, this weapon is a little underpowered rather than overpowered. When it comes to attachments, I'm definitely not as impressed as I was with our first mod. There simply isn't that many attachments, and they're all pretty standard fair stuff. There's nothing wacky or creative here at all. Not even paint jobs. Still, I can't deny, this is a really good mod, and there's a lot of room for it to improve with updates. Nevertheless, as of right now, it's not good enough to beat the other options on this list. Third, we have the Ruger 5.56 Assault Rifle. It's a much more modern take on the AR-15. I'm showing off the 2K version here, but there is a 4K texture version available. This weapon has no unique variants, but it is integrated into leveled lists after you complete the startup quest Unfinished Deal, which amounts to little more than following a quest marker and picking up the rifle. After the quest is done, a menu pops up to let you choose how you want the weapon integrated into leveled lists. I can't say the weapon is ugly, nor can I fault its animations, although the reload is very slow. You'll notice this weapon shares many animations in common with the Surplus Rifle mod. In fact, a lot of the weapons on this list borrow at least a few animations from the RU-556. Anyways, this weapon is a bit unbalanced, it just does too much damage for an automatic weapon. Generally, automatic receivers are supposed to deal far less damage than their semi-auto counterparts in Fallout 4, but that's not really the case with this gun's receivers. Still, the reload time being over 4 seconds long does help reduce the effective DPS, so it's not completely overpowered. As far as attachments go, there's a good selection. Don't expect to see any retro-futuristic style parts with this gun, though. It's all tactical modern stuff, so if you like that, you might think this mod is a decent choice. However, our next mod also has tons of modern parts, and it blows the RU-556 out of the water in every way imaginable, so let's move on to it. Our fourth mod, and the second I recommended, is SREP Redux, Service Rifle Expansion Pack. This is an updated version of a previous mod called Wasteland Melody's Service Rifle, and damn is it huge, totaling nearly a gigabyte in size. This mod adds two base weapons, a service rifle and an AR-10, both of which are integrated into leveled lists. The AR-10 is almost exclusively used by gunners, while the service rifle can be found on both gunners and raiders. Both of these weapons can also be bought from vendors, too. This mod adds two unique weapons. One is a carbine called No Heroics, which can be found at Fort Hagen in the room right before you meet Kellogg. The second is a honey badger, which is unused. You'll have to spawn it in through the console, along with its equally unused 300 blackout ammo. As for the base weapons, they both use the same animations, many of them borrowed from the RU-556 mod. Unlike the RU-556 though, these weapons have the first person power armor double footsteps glitch. Thankfully, there is a patch to fix it that I've linked in the description. I like how scratched up the service rifle's default appearance is, it sure looks like it's 200 years old. This doesn't apply to the AR-10, however. In fact, the AR-10 seems like an afterthought compared to the service rifle itself, considering how few attachments it has, and the fact that it even uses the same sounds as the service rifle despite being a higher caliber weapon. Regardless, both weapons are quite overpowered. The AR-10 is somewhat more justifiably so, considering it fires 308 rounds, but there's no justification for a well-modified service rifle's damage to be nearly double that of a fully upgraded vanilla assault rifle. If you add an underbarrel M203 grenade launcher to the service rifle, you can switch to it using an ingestible crafted at a chemistry lab. The transition between normal mode and grenade launcher mode is a bit jarring, and I wish you could set an MCM hotkey for the grenade launcher rather than use an ingestible, Still, this is a very unique feature. As for other attachments, the AR-10 has a disappointingly small number of options. The service rifle, on the other hand, has a crazy number of attachments, both modern and retro. It would probably take nearly five minutes to list them all. It's insane. If attachment variety is all you care about, this mod absolutely takes the cake. Next up is the AR-15 Family Mod. It comes in two versions, one with level list injection and one without. If you get the leveled list inject version, you can find the weapon on gunners, raiders, and vendors. But with either version, you can craft it at the chem lab. There aren't any unique variants of this weapon, however. This weapon's model is a bit blocky, and textures are murky and simplistic. 
They hold up well enough under scrutiny, but when combined with an abrasive firing sound and missing bolt release sound, let's just say this weapon doesn't leave a great first impression. It also has animation problems, to say the least, in third-person power armor, and the receiver is invisible when viewed on your back while using classic holstered weapons. The balancing is quite bad as well. Changing the fire mode between semi and full auto doesn't adjust the damage nearly enough, and when combined with the ridiculously overpowered military-grade ammo, this weapon can have a DPS of over 1700, and that would be doubled if you took every rank in the commando perk. The attachment variety is also lacking compared to other mods on this list. There is an underbarrel M203 launcher, but it's purely decorative. Overall, this is a mediocre mod. It's not worth considering. Sixth, we have PBW, the service pack. This mod requires munitions as a dependency. It adds two new base weapons into the game, both inspired by Fallout New Vegas, the service rifle and the assault carbine. There are also three uniques. At Walden Pond, you can find a box. Unpack it at a chem lab and you'll get the Abilene Kid BBLEGI rifle, which is a service rifle that fires BB pellets. Also at Walden Pond, you can find a hollow tape that directs you to the combat zone where you can find the guaranteed delivery rifle. Lastly, you can find a marksman carbine at the South Boston Military Checkpoint. The service rifle and assault carbine are both integrated into leveled lists. You can find them on Brotherhood troops, Minutemen, gunners, raiders, and at vendors. These weapons don't look that great, and they all use vanilla handmade rifle animations. While this does mean they have no problems in power armor, they look terrible compared to every other mod on this list. The balancing, on the other hand, is pretty good. While the unique Marksman Carbine and Guaranteed Delivery do a lot of damage, they can't be modified at all, so you're stuck with semi-auto fire and far from ideal optics. And even with the best receivers, the Assault Carbine's damage is no higher than a top-of-the-line handmade rifle. The service rifle is limited to semi-auto, which severely hurts its potential DPS. Additionally, these weapons are very heavy and have anemic fire rates, so I can't complain about them being overpowered. The attachment variety is quite lackluster, though. There's really not much on offer. I just find this mod mediocre. Deadpool 2099 service rifle is leagues better than this. There's no reason to give it any consideration in its current state. Next up is the Ultimate M4 Pack. Their words, not mine. It requires tactical reload by default, but there is a no tactical reload version available. Make sure you download the texture files after the main file, unless you want all your weapons to be pink. I would recommend the low resolution texture file. Anyways, this mod has no leveled list injection, but it does add a whopping 17 different weapon variants to the game. However, not all of them have actually been placed in the game world, and in any case, there's too many weapons for me to look at individually. At the Museum of Freedom, you can find the basics though, the M16A1, M16A2, and M16K. These weapons have been well modeled and animated by Treyarch, and I guess the porting job didn't come out too bad, but holy crap, the firing sounds, especially the burst fire sounds, are like a goddamn jet engine. Also, burst fire doesn't properly reduce your ammo count in third person, and definitely not in third person power armor. You can also see some weird ghost attachments sometimes in third person. In first person power armor, we've got the double footsteps bug, and there is no fix for it as well as the magazine turning invisible whenever you reload. So, unless you're planning on playing in first person, outside of power armor, 100% of the time, you will have a terrible experience with these guns. And of course these weapons are very overpowered. First of all, some of them use 45 caliber ammo instead of 5.56 for reasons I can't fathom, but their damage hasn't been reduced at all as a result. Secondly, automatic receivers do nearly as much damage as their burst fire and semi-auto counterparts. There's even a barrel that adds 20 extra damage for no reason. Combine this with a stupidly high rate of fire, fast reload time, and very lightweight, and you've got yourself some super overpowered guns. The attachments in this mod are... fine, I guess. You'll need see-through scopes for most of the sights to work. Don't try using the 50 cal magazine, the firing sound will loop uncontrollably until you put the weapon away again. Honestly, just don't use this mod at all. It has way too many bugs, and it's outclassed by SREP in every way imaginable anyways. 
Second to last, we have Modern Warfare 2022 Expansive M4 2.0. This mod also requires tactical reload by default, unless you get the no tactical reload version. Make sure to download the high resolution textures after the main file, since the main file doesn't come with any textures, even though it kind of implies that it does. This weapon has no level list injection and no unique variants. It's been placed at Fort Hagen, and that's about it. As far as appearances go, this weapon does impress. It has great animations and sounds, ported over directly from the latest Call of Duty. The third person animations are excellent too, but in Power Armor we have the double footsteps bug, and there is no patch to fix it at this time. Some people have also reported going invisible in third person whenever they use this weapon, but I was unable to trigger that kind of bug. The balancing is pretty bad. Automatic receivers do the exact same damage as their semi-automatic counterparts, and only a few of the attachments affect the weight of the weapon, strangely enough. The attachments are numerous, but not nearly as numerous as SREP, and sadly most optics require the use of see-through scopes. Overall, this mod is not very good. And there's not much more to say, so let's move on to our last mod for today, the Advanced Battle Rifle, a Screaming Eagle recreation. This mod adds the Screaming Eagle rifle from Fallout 76 into Fallout 4, with some extra modifications and paint jobs. It has leveled list integration, but no unique variants. For no real reason, this mod edits Diamond City, messing with precombines in the area, and it even edits some of the triggers for Nick Valentine's detective quests. Nothing was actually changed with these edits though, which makes me think they were a mistake that was accidentally left in the mod. You'll want to clean these changes out yourself if you do download it. This weapon looks pretty okay, I guess. It's nothing special. There are custom animations for first person, but not third person. And in any case, they don't look that much better than handmade rifle animations. There are no problems in power armor, though. The balancing is also pretty good. Damage is a bit on the high side, but this is a 308 caliber weapon, and its heavy weight and relatively low fire rate counterbalance the high damage a lot. There's also an okay variety of attachments with this weapon, but it just cannot stand up to Deadpool, Service Rifle, or SREP. It's a decent mod, but it's not on the same level. I can't recommend this when there are way better options available. And so concludes this long-ass video. I hope I helped you pick a good Service Rifle mod for your load order. <sighs> I'm tired now. I think I'm gonna go... You, d you don't want to know. Let's be honest. You don't want to know. Bye, viewers.